Let's start off this video with an interior cold start of the Ram TRX. This is a 2022 Ram TRX. And in case you can't tell, it's pretty big. But we're gonna go over my entire experience with this truck in about the year and eight months that I've owned it. And one word comes to mind to sum this whole thing up. Ridiculous. All right, guys, so like I said there in the beginning, I have owned this truck for about a year and eight months or so. I bought it brand new in April of 2022. Since then, I have put about 11,000 miles on this truck, a lot of road driving, a little bit of uh, off-roading, and of course, some drag strip time, because yeah, this thing is ridiculous. We're gonna talk all about why I use the word ridiculous to describe this truck, and I wanna kind of preface this with saying that even though I'm using the word ridiculous, I'm using it in a good way, mostly. Let's get right into it. So the first thing you're gonna notice about the Ram TRX in general is its size. This thing is absolutely immense, and when it's on the road, you really feel it. Now, it is given the name TRX or T-Rex because it is immense, but at the same time, if you're used to driving around a Prius or something compact, this thing is gonna be a totally different game for you. Now, let's start the review by going over all of the information about this truck. So like I said, it is a 2022. It is a level two interior truck, which means you get all of the nicer leather, the red and black stitching option, heated and cooled seats, adaptive cruise control, and all of the creature comforts that you could possibly want. One of the biggest reasons why I call this truck ridiculous is because you really don't sacrifice much of anything. We will talk about the one thing you do sacrifice a little later in the video, but comfort is incredible on this thing. The speed is incredible. The sound is incredible. The room inside the cabin, incredible or ridiculous. Moving on, even though they are not the stock wheels and tires you see here now, I did opt for the non-beadlock wheels whenever I bought the truck because I just didn't care for the look of the beadlocks. I ended up upgrading the wheels and the tires to what you see here now, which is, of course is the black diamond wheels with the Nitto Ridge Grappler tires. All of the info will be in the description down below. You can actually save a couple bucks on these wheels if you buy them from the link in the description, and I absolutely love them. We're gonna go over all of the mods I've done on the truck a little later in the video as well. But ultimately, what you're seeing here in 2022 cost me $100,310. Yeah, ridiculous. Outside of the options we already talked about, I also got the tow mirrors, the Ram bar, and Mopar's off-road side steps or the steps to basically get into the truck. Other than that, that's really all I selected on the truck. The uh, options were kind of few and far in between. So basically, I'm a Chevy guy. I'm used to going on to the website to build the car and checking 36,000 boxes to get exactly what I wanted. On this truck, there wasn't a whole lot of things you could customize, but it added up really quickly, especially once you click the level two interior and the black and red stitched interior, the price of the truck jumped up something like $12,000. It, it got expensive quick. So like I said, you're looking at a $100,000 truck. If you were to buy the same truck in 2024, I believe it is between twelve dollars and $15,000 more than what I paid in 2022. The price of this truck has just skyrocketed since it came out in 2021. Anyway, guys, moving on to my experience in the year and eight months that I have had this truck. And like I said in the beginning, I would preface this with it, the fact that this truck is ridiculous. Now, one of the first reviews I read about this truck before I went and bought it was, I don't remember where it was on the internet, but the article was talking about this truck and the fact that it maintained its spot on the top of Mount Ridiculous. And I love the way that that article came across because it used the word ridiculous in a way that really describes this truck and it doesn't take away from it. As you can see from the front view, this thing is wide. It is significantly wider than any of the other Rams in the lineup. And I wanna say they, they said online that it was six inches wider. Now, because of how wide it is, that's why you're gonna notice these guys right here, which are the basically the positioning lights for road driving to make sure that they are transportation legal. So basically, 
If your truck or car is a certain width, you have to have those lights. Now you'll notice those are the same kind of lights you'll see on like semi trucks and really big, big rig trucks because they're wide too. Let's talk about what you lose because of that width. You really lose the ability to drive this and park it in any kind of compact spots. This thing is not going to fit in a normal parking space designed for smaller cars. So if you go to a parking garage, that's something to be aware of. The other thing, the other con that I would say to this truck is the gas mileage. Of course, you guys have probably heard this a million times. The gas mileage in this truck is not that great. I drive this truck in sport mode and we're gonna talk all about the modes in a little bit, but I drive it mostly in sport. And in sport, I'm averaging somewhere around 9.6 miles per gallon. Now you can increase that by going to different modes, but then uh, it, it becomes less ridiculous. All right, so other than all of the review stuff we've been talking about, let's go for a little bit of a drive here, guys, because that is where this truck really shines. So right now I am in sport mode and it has a really good on the road kind of manner that really makes you, it kind of surprises you that the truck is as good as it is off road whenever it's this good on road. So we're gonna go just for a little bit of a drive here just to kind of show you how the thing handles and what it sounds like. So this is in sport mode, like I said. The exhaust is a little louder and it handles the road really nicely. It feels more like a sports car in this mode. But yeah, guys, I mean, just look at the interior of this truck. The interior, the drive feel, just the sound, I mean, it's, it's all just really, really fantastic. And Another thing is with how wide the truck is, you can see the lane indicator there. It is very easy to kind of just ping pong between the yellow and the white lines on the road because of how large this is. And I, I do like that it has that option because it will help keep you in the lane, but at the same time, you're constantly going back and forth because the truck is big. But like I said, if you're okay with the size of this thing, this will absolutely be the best vehicle in your inventory. A little acceleration here. Another thing to be mindful of is the fact that this truck is constantly in four-wheel drive. There is no two-wheel drive option. There's no dial to turn. You will always be in four-wheel drive. That is one of the reasons why the gas mileage on this truck is not that great, but it's something to keep in mind. So in my year in eight months of ownership, would I recommend this truck to you? The answer is absolutely freaking lutely I would. Why is this truck so awesome? Well, let me go through it for you guys. So number one, under the hood, you have a 702 horsepower engine. Yeah, ridiculous. Like I said earlier, you have a four wheel drive system that is always activated. You are always spinning all four wheels. Now you still do have the option of four high and four low for when you go off road. You have a rear locker again for when you go off roading. And this truck is built for off roading between off road and Baja style driving. You can jump this thing, you can launch it. There is no shortage of what you can do with this kind of truck again. It's just ridiculous because at the end of the day, I'm a Corvette owner. I have three Corvettes and my TRX. And if you told me tomorrow that I had to sell all of my cars and only keep one, this would be it. This would be the one I keep. And you may say, Justin, how's that possible? You love Corvettes. And I do, I absolutely love Corvettes, but this thing does everything. When my Corvette's stored in the garage and can't come out during the winter, this thing can do it. And not only can it do it, it still has that 702 horsepower while it's snowing, while it's four wheel drive, I can literally have access to it all year round and that's fantastic. Plus, if I wanna carry something in the bed, I can do that. If I wanna tow something, I can do that. If I wanna go off roading, I can do that. This thing does it all. It's not limited to just a sports car nice day kind of drive. Coming back to the rear of the truck, you can see the Bilstein shocks that are specifically designed for the TRX for its jumping capability, for its off-roading capability, but mostly for its on-road manners. So like I said earlier, there are different modes you can cycle through with this truck to get it to be compliant for whatever it is you're doing. So if you wanna go to the sand dunes and do some Baja style racing, there's a Baja mode. If you wanna just go and drive on the street, normally not really do anything crazy, just go to the grocery store, you can put it in an auto mode that will automatically adapt to the street. 
If you want to go drive on the street or take it to the drag strip, there is a sport mode that you can select that will increase how hard and how long it takes for the transmission to shift. The suspension will get stiffer. The steering will get stiffer. This thing literally is like a sports car in a gigantic truck body. Now moving back the rear a little bit more here, you can start to see that this truck, even though it is wider and significantly different looking, it still maintains a lot of the Ram 1500 appearance. So you can clearly see where this truck came from. But at the same time, if you line this up next to a Rebel, we'll say, you can clearly see there's a difference. Now, the TRX is supposed to be crazy. It's supposed to be the, the biggest, craziest, wildest truck that Ram makes. That's why it's nicknamed the TRX or the T-Rex. There's a bunch of Easter eggs under the hood inside the interior that basically show a T-Rex eating a Raptor because, yeah, Dodge wanted to take a couple shots at Ford. And honestly, in my personal experience, in my personal opinion, they nailed it. I personally have test drove a Ram TRX as well as a Ford Raptor and not the Raptor R, but just the normal Raptor. I would choose the TRX over the Raptor every single day in every single category. Again, here on the backside, guys, I wanted to talk about the fact that we still do have an electronic tailgate. So you still get a lot of your creature comforts with this truck. You're not really giving up anything. We have the electric opening or electrically actuated tailgate. I also have the tow package. So this truck can tow 8,100 pounds, which for an off-road vehicle, that's pretty crazy. In the rear, of course, we do have the dual exhaust, which I opted to go with the AWE exhaust over the stock exhaust. And we'll throw some sound clips in here for good measure. <laughs> Other than that, we have some tow hooks or recovery hooks here in the back, again, for some of your off-roading. You really don't give up much with the TRX. So basically, to sum up this entire video, like I said earlier, would I recommend this truck? 100% I would. If you are interested in an off-road beast that can also do it on-road and can do it insanely fast, can go to the drag strip, can go to the dunes, I mean, this truck literally will do it all. It has a uh, five foot seven bed. So if you have home repairs you have to do, you can get things done. You can get things in the bed. It's not the largest bed you're gonna find on a truck, of course, but at the same time, it's about the same as a regular 1500. There's not much difference as far as that's concerned. So unless you're getting an extended bed from some other manufacturer, this thing's gonna kind of keep up with the 1500s in general. If you are like me and you're big into sports cars, you like the speed, you like all that stuff, this truck is going to be right at home with you. You're gonna be able to do everything you wanna do all year round, and there really is no limitations. There's no cons other than, of course, the gas mileage. Now, I've said in the title that this was gonna be the good, the bad, and the ugly. The bad for me would be probably the price. I think the price of this vehicle is a little high, is a little extreme for what you get. Honestly, you do get a lot, but at the same time, paying over $100,000 for a truck nowadays just seems nuts. And I know a lot of manufacturers out there are selling their trucks for over 100K. I don't know. I just feel like it's, it's a little overpriced. Now, the ugly, there's really only one bad and one ugly for me. The bad is, of course, the, the price of the vehicle, but the ugly is gonna be the gas mileage. If you're in sport mode and you drive it the way I do, I'm averaging 9.6 miles per gallon, and that's really not going totally crazy on the street. If you select the snow mode, you can actually get up to about 14 miles per gallon on the highway, which is not bad, but it's going to really decrease the throttle sensitivity. It, it puts the suspension into a real soft mode. It's just not what you want if you want a sports car feel. The good, I can go all day. The good for this truck, it literally does everything. So you can do your off-roading, like I said, the Baja driving, all that stuff. You can go to the drag strip. You can normal drive this thing daily to the grocery store, like I've said. There's a million reasons to buy this truck and really only two reasons not to, the price and the gas mileage. If you can get past those two things, this truck is where you wanna be. I spent a lot of time with this truck and I noticed something pretty much right off the bat. As soon as I stepped foot into this truck, there's nothing else like this. There is nothing else like this being made and odds are very good there will never be something like this made ever again with the way that we're moving towards electric vehicles and 
getting away from the gas guzzlers and things, this is probably the last of the last. And for me, that means I gotta make it last as long as I can because I wanna keep something like this in my arsenal for as long as possible. And if there's nothing like this anymore, then this is it. Now, my experience with the truck. Have I had any issues? Yes and no. Now, we're gonna talk all about this because this is a big portion of a review video, and that is how has the truck held up in the last year and eight months, 10,200 miles? I have not had any serious issues with the truck. There is one issue that is still existent, and there really isn't a fix for it. I know that sounds, that, does, that definitely sounds bad, but let me explain. So the only issue I ever had to take the truck to the dealership for was a tailgate recall. So the tailgate was opening by itself on some trucks. I never had that issue, but Dodge wanted to bring in all the trucks and readjust the strikers and stuff on the actual tailgate to make sure it wasn't opening without someone pushing the button, basically. So the, the truck's been in for service one time because of that. While it was in for the tailgate, I also had them change the oil. That's actually the second time I've changed the oil since I've owned the truck. So I'm doing somewhere around 5,000 mile intervals. I believe the first one was done at around 2,500 to 3,000 miles just because I did it myself and I wanted to do it a little earlier. I, I'm a firm believer in getting that factory fluid out of there sooner than later. But what is the issue that I still have currently? It is the drive shaft clunk. So if you guys aren't familiar with the TRX, for some reason, right around 2,000 miles, a lot of people are starting to feel it, is at a stoplight, you'll come to a stop, and then as soon as you start to go again, you'll feel the drive shaft actually clunk back into place. The fix for it is relatively easy, but from what I understand, it's not a permanent fix. So basically, there's a slip joint in the actual drive shaft that needs to be greased, and over time, somehow that grease dries up and then it starts clunking again. So I'm kind of waiting for a permanent fix to come out before I do anything with that. But be mindful of this. If you're looking for a TRX, you might run into this same issue. And honestly, it's not even a giant issue. I barely even notice it anymore, but it is annoying and it is there. Other than that, guys, I have had absolutely no problems with this truck. I have a bunch of mods done to it, a lot of which you can see here. Nothing performance related yet, other than my AWE exhaust, which does add power. I do plan on putting a, a smaller pulley on it. I don't think I'll tune it until after it's out of warranty, but I will drop a, probably a 5% overdrive pulley on it just to add a couple extra ponies. And really, that's pretty much my experience. The interior shows no signs of wear, no signs of s scratching anywhere, no weird electrical issues. I've had absolutely no problems with the truck otherwise. Mine is a 2022, so the gauge display is still semi-analog with a digital screen in the middle versus the 23s and 24s have a fully digital display. And I have heard some whisperings online that the fully digital display has had some issues. And personally, I actually like the look of the split digital analog gauges that I have in my truck. So I don't know that I really love the digital anyway. But either way, that's something else to keep in mind if you're looking for one of these trucks. The 21s and 22s are going to have the split analog digital setup. The 23 and 24s will have the fully digital display. Now, if you are looking for one of these, 24 is the last year for this. So yes, Dodge has already said there will be no more TRX after 2024. If they were to ever make something again in the future, like I said, it's going to be a V6 at the absolute biggest. So Again, you're just not going to get something like this ever again. All right, guys, so that is my review. Like I said, if you want to buy one of these trucks, if you're in the market for it, you have my blessing. It's 100% a fantastic truck, and it is going to be very hard for me someday in the future to replace this thing because they just don't make them like this. You really only have two options for a truck similar to this, and it's the TRX or the Ford Raptor. That's going to be your only option in the future, but for now, this thing is absolutely ridiculous. All right, guys, so we got the review out of the way. Let's talk mods. My 2022 Ram TRX here has a couple mods you can see right off the bat. Let's start at the very front. Of course, we're gonna notice the front skid plate is black. It is not the gray skid plate that you normally would get on the TRX. I swapped it to a black one. I'll put the part number in the description down below if you guys are interested in doing something like this on your truck, which if you have a black one especially, I highly recommend it. The gray just did not look correct in that location. Moving up, the next big one that's gonna actually be kind of on the front end is the fact that the entire truck is expelled. So I have 10 mil paint protection film on the entire truck. Anything that's painted is protected with expel paint protection film. And then on top of that, I have the expel fusion plus premium eight year ceramic coating on everything. So everything on the exterior has been ceramic coated as well. 
Moving back a little bit from there, we get the wheels and tires. Like I said, these are Nitto Ridge Grapplers. These are 35 inch tires, so they're about half an inch taller than the stock tires. They're 13 and a half wide, which means they're significantly wider than the stock wheels. And then of course the black diamond wheels I have here are the 0401s, I believe. And uh, they are a textured black finish. They are a 20 offset, so it sticks out a good bit more than the stock wheel does. It really fits pretty flush with the fenders. Maybe sticks out a hair past the, the fender flare here, but it, it gives the truck a much meatier look. Moving up onto the hood, we can see here, guys, I have the 6.2 liter supercharged badges completely in black. Again, just to kind of go with the blacked out theme of the truck. So this was something I added after the fact. And again, check out the link down below if you're interested. I have the matte black TRX logos on the hood, as well as the bedsides back there. And those were done after the fact. They are not factory. They're put on over top of the paint protection film. And this came to us from a company called Underground Graphics. Moving back a little bit further, we have some ditch lights. Now these were provided to us by a company called LastFit. The ditch lights are really high quality, but the biggest problem with mounting these on these trucks is there's not really a whole lot of ditch light brackets out there. And those are really the only ones that will fit that I know of. There is one other brand out there, but I didn't particularly like the look of it. Moving back a little further, we have the tow mirrors. So like I said, I do have the tow mirror package on this truck, but you can see that the top right of them where the bright white turn signal usually is, is tinted out. I had my detail shop tint that as well as the taillights on the truck to knock everything down a little bit more for the black appearance. In that same area, you can see the Dodge OEM window vent visors on the front and the rear. Those were actually really nice. They help with the, the girth of the truck. They make it look a little wider. And they also offer a little bit of functionality as far as rolling the windows down whenever it's raining or wet outside. Down below on the door, you can see I replaced the Ram badge with a TRX badge instead. Again, all of this stuff will be linked in the description down below if you guys are interested in any of it. Coming around to the back again, guys, like I said earlier, I do have the AWE exhaust on this truck. So this is one of the better sounding exhausts I have had experiences with. It loses a little bit of weight and it gains a little bit of power. Plus it sounds really awesome. So I would highly recommend that as well. Up on top here, we if you could see the black American flag. It is a matte black finish on the glass, which is obviously gloss black. That's something else that I added as well as the bed cover here from Retrax. This is the Pro Retrax, but not the electric one. I've had really, really, really good experience with the Retrax bed cover. I'm not a big bed cover fan, but the way that this one operates is absolutely fantastic. If you're looking for a bed cover, I would highly recommend the Retrax. Again, links in the description if you're interested. Moving down from there, guys, of course, I mentioned the tinted taillights earlier. This is tinted with a material from uh, Lux, I believe. It might be Vivid. I can't remember which one it was, but either way, both companies make a really solid taillight tint kit. And uh, if you go to your detail shop, odds are good they'd be able to do that for you as well. The taillights look way better tinted on the black exterior, of course, as well as those tow mirrors in the front, just knocking it all down so the black looks a little bit better. Coming down from there, we have the American flag tow hitch receiver area plug. And it's a, just another way to say America. In the engine, like I said, I haven't done a whole lot in here yet, guys, but I have done the Mighty Mouse catch can. And honestly, this catches a good bit of oil. So in my experience or my opinion, this is something you should definitely be looking into. The Mighty Mouse, or I've seen a couple other catch cans online, but I, I prefer this one just because it also has a venting option. So no excessive crankcase pressure is gonna build up. But with all that said, it catches enough oil that I would recommend getting one. And that is really the only mod that I've done to the engine area yet. I do have some plans on an intake. And like I said, possibly a pulley in the future. So stay tuned for that. But otherwise, that and the AWE exhaust is really only mechanical things on the truck. Interior wise, I do have 5% window tint on the entire truck. So even on the front and the rear, all of it is tinted because it's done with Expel XR Plus, which is a really, really good tint at reducing heat from coming into the cabin as well as, you know, attributing to that blacked out look. I do also have the screen protector and I don't remember the company that makes it, but I'll link it down below. It's actually a glass screen protector on the big infotainment system. It's on Amazon. It was only like 20 bucks, and it was one of the first mods I actually did to the truck. Up from there, you can see I do have a radar detector, and that is held in there with a blend mount right underneath the rearview mirror. That is a Redline 360C, and yeah, it helps keep you safe. Plus, it's black and red, which goes with the rest of the interior. 
Now, right in front of that, you can actually see that little bulge is actually a dash cam. Now, that dash cam replaces the entire plastic surround around that mirror, so it looks totally stock, but it gives you the protection of having a dash cam. Again, I'll link it in the description down below, guys. I highly recommend this piece. It was really easy to install, and there's no visible evidence that it's even there. Other than that, the interior is pretty much stock. I do have the interior ceramic coated as well. That's another thing you can get done at your detail shop, or if you're in the area of Pennsylvania or Florida, stop by and see us, Blackout Tinting. They will take care of you. They'll ceramic coat anything you want ceramic coated. I've actually had a pair of sunglasses ceramic coated before because it can be done. But the ceramic coating offers an extra layer of protection on the interior. And of course, with all that said, all the miles on my truck, there is no visible wear on any of the Alcantara, the leather, the steering wheel. Everything still looks perfectly stock, perfectly OEM. There is no wear to speak of on the truck because of all of the mods and just the general quality of the truck. The only other mod that I have that you can't really see is a taser. So if you guys don't know what that is, it's a little device that plugs in underneath the dash and gives you a little extra control over the truck. The big one for me is I can have the mirrors close whenever the truck is shut off, they'll automatically fold in. Because the truck is so wide, it's good to have stuff like that. On top of that, I have the daytime running lights set to always be on the amber color instead of lighting up white so it gives it a more big truck slash ford raptor look and i really like that as well i have it set so the fog lights always stay on instead of being uh, lights that turn on only whenever you're turned in that direction they also stay on with the high beams for off-road use of course there are some security measures that the taser will add to the truck as well and in my case if you lock it with the key fob the truck cannot be unlocked or it can't be driven away with any other key fob other than the one you lock it with. So if you're worried about theft with this truck, the Taser DT will really have you covered as far as that's concerned. That's pretty much it. So you got a rundown of my mods. You got a rundown of what I think of the truck after a year and eight months. Hopefully this helps somebody out there. If you guys are interested in buying a truck like this, I, I, uh, I would be glad to enter into a conversation with you about it. So leave your comments in the comment section down below or shoot me an email at horsepowerobsessed at gmail.com and I will gladly have a conversation with you about it if you're thinking about one of these trucks. If you're in the area, you can always stop by, hear mine, uh, take a ride in mine, all kinds of stuff. If you're interested in one of these and you can't get your hands on one, I will gladly help you out in that decision. But guys, if you liked what you saw, please smash the thumbs up button. Let me know you're liking the content. It is winter time here in Pennsylvania, so as soon as the snow starts flying, you're gonna be seeing a lot more mods on the truck. I actually have at least two more mods sitting in my garage right now that I'm gonna be installing any day now for the truck. So stay tuned for those. Subscribe if you haven't yet, guys. And as always, I will see you in the next upload.